Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'll be talking to you about the lessons I've learned about creating YouTube videos. And I wanted to talk about the specific mechanics, processes, and tools that I've used for creating my channel. Really starting from knowing nothing to scripting, filming, editing, and then finally uploading to the YouTube. The whole process has been a huge undertaking and I found it quite rewarding. I'll go through the entire process of creating a YouTube channel and tell you the lessons I learned from each of those sections. And then I'll talk about the likes and dislikes of creating my first few videos. And I'll also talk about some of the things I want to do for my channel to improve in the future. And let's go. So I'll quickly go through my entire workflow for creating a YouTube video. I'll link down in the description box below the tutorials, the tools, and the channels that I used when creating my YouTube videos. So to start off, I watched a ton of YouTube videos before I started my channel. So I learned very quickly how to get myself acquainted with YouTube. So basically I started to watch a ton of YouTube channels specifically on creating YouTube channels. So then I started to look at my favorite YouTubers and seeing what kind of video styles that they have. And then I try to emulate their production style and quality. Now, obviously I'm not gonna copy them, but I wanna emulate a successful YouTube channel. So I'll link down in the description box some of the channels that I follow that has really high production quality. Based on their recommendations, I bought a couple of things from Amazon to start my YouTube channel. And I'll link them in the description box below on what I purchased. So in the beginning, I really wanted to focus on the critical things that I need to start my YouTube channel. This involved a microphone, uh, a light and stand, and a video camera. So for the video camera, I used the Samsung Galaxy 21 Ultra. It can film in both 4K and 8K video. I think that it is an amazing tool to start creating videos from. So I also bought a separate light stand and mic to help me, which I'll link in the description box below. So really, I started out with very few equipment, um, and that's all I really needed for now. So in the future, I'll upgrade these things and maybe add a better mic, better lighting. But in the beginning, I think those are sufficient to create some decent YouTube videos. So after buying the equipment, I had to work on scripting my YouTube channel. In order for you to create a channel, you have to have a niche. And in terms of having a niche, you have to have ideas. And those ideas have to be consistent over a long period of time. You had to figure out what you want to talk about weeks and weeks in advance so you have content that stacks up. So I had to break down my videos into more and more distinct pieces so that I had more content and I could talk about the content in an eloquent manner. And so once I actually got to scripting the video titles, then it became another difficult process in and of itself. So basically I started out with creating a line by line script of what I was gonna say during the videos. It resulted in me flubbing my words and not memorizing my sentences. This disrupted the overall flow and it took me three times the amount of time it takes to shoot one video. So I switched to an outline method. The outline method, which other YouTubers use, resulted in a smoother process. It's a process which I could go off the cuff and still remain in my talking points as well. It allowed me to focus on not the specific words, but the group of words during my videos. So then once I actually got the outline, then it was a matter of me just creating a lot of outlines for a lot of videos. So the next step is filming. So the filming was the most difficult part to get used to. So filming requires a whole bunch of things that work synergistically together. So you have to go through the audio, the lighting conditions, and ultimately the video that you're shooting. One of the things I really struggled with is audio. First with the audio, you know, getting a quiet place and then also figuring out how to mute background noise. Although I had a phone capable of shooting different video styles, I had to play around with these video styles and I had to figure out which one works for me. So for right now, I've settled on 4K resolution at 30 frames per second, but I played around with 60 frames per second and I played around with just 1080p. So this in the beginning was really hard to get settled on because I didn't know which matched my style the best. The, the most difficult aspect that I really had to get acquainted was, was with the lighting. And so I normally don't have a bright light shining on me all the time. So I actually don't like a lot of light and I had to really struggle with having a bright light shown on me all the time. So shooting in different locations with the proper lighting was a really tricky challenge. And the environment that I'm shooting in also had its own challenges as well. Because of the limited space in my apartment, there was limited angles where I could shoot from. Normally the apartment's pretty messy and I don't wanna shoot in a messy background. So that limits my options of where I could shoot. Ultimately, I decided to have a few angles that were relatively clean. 
but then even in these relatively clean backgrounds, there's not much. Ultimately, I want to have a studio and shoot within that studio so I can maintain my shooting environment and I don't have to change things all the time, like the audio, the lighting, and then the background. So the other part of filming that challenged me was even though I had an outline for what I was going to say, saying it consistently, clearly, and succinctly is very difficult. There's many cases where I had to cut, cut, cut things that just didn't make any sense or that I flub up on a word and I have to redo the sentence over again. Since I don't know what it'll look like in post-process, I have to say the line over and over and then when I go into the editing process, cut those out later. So it just ends up with me having a very long video in the end and cutting it down to shorter and shorter pieces, which creates issues in the editing process itself, which I'll explain in the next step. So for me, editing is actually one of the more enjoyable aspects of creating a YouTube video. I actually like how calming and in the flow I can get with editing videos. I know some people don't actually like it because it's tedious and time consuming, but I actually enjoy the process. I think it has everything to do with how easy the process has been and how in the flow I can get when I'm editing a video. So I certainly cut down the editing time by getting premium tools for editing my YouTube videos. So for example, I use Adobe Premiere Pro and I found out that it's the industry standard for movies, YouTube videos, and anything to do with video editing. And the best part of using Premiere Pro is that there are so many other YouTube channels that use Premiere Pro and have their own instructional videos on how to do very simple to very complex things in Premiere Pro. So really, it's one of the easiest tools to use when it comes to editing hundreds of hours worth of video. I also use Canva for my graphic art needs. So these are my graphics in my videos, they're my thumbnails, and any other miscellaneous graphics that I want to use in my channel. Canva is a very intuitive tool to use and I found it very easy to generate different graphics using it. And the best thing about it is Canva has a whole bunch of templates pre-made for you and then you can customize it however you want. And the last thing I used is Storyblocks. It is basically a site where you can get copyrighted music, b-roll footage, and then custom templates for your Premiere Pro. It has helped make my videos a little bit more premium than just me talking in front of a camera. And as for YouTube, I've learned a lot about the algorithm and viewership. It is very complicated. And even the video tutorials that I've seen go into a fair mid amount of depth. Most of them focus on when you actually get your YouTube channel monetized. So that's a process that for me is still a mystery. And in terms of actually uploading to YouTube, I've made a lot of mistakes by not reviewing the videos that I upload and not putting the right descriptions, not writing the descriptions properly, and also not really utilizing my SEO keywords. Those are some of the things I'm still learning, but in terms of the overall process, I'm focusing more on the filming aspects first. Once I get into a consistent rhythm with my filming, then I'll start to optimize my YouTube channel. So here are some of the likes and dislikes about shooting YouTube videos. So one of the things I really like about shooting YouTube videos is the outlining process. As I mentioned earlier, it's pretty difficult for me to outline a video. I'm starting to get more efficient at it, and when I'm getting more efficient at it, I can do it faster. And even the process of writing the outlines have become more enjoyable because now I actually get to expand on something that I want to talk about in further detail. So for example, when I'm starting out with a video title, I have a very broad idea of what I want to talk about. And then when I go into the intro, the body, and then the conclusion, I start to flesh those ideas out. In the body itself, I realize what about the topic that I really want to dig into and what do I want to explain to you guys. So even if I have an idea that's not fully fleshed in my mind, by the time I get to the body, I have an exact idea of what I want to tell you and how to get that point across to you efficiently. And then the second thing is, I like to edit videos. Editing videos for me gets me in the flow. I like building a whole video from different small parts. It's like building a story each and every time. So you start with broken fragments and pieces, and then you create a whole YouTube video from it. So you have different video clips, you have different graphics, you have different music and sound bites. You create that into a whole cohesive narrative. So here are some of the dislikes I have about shooting YouTube videos. The filming process has been longer than anticipated, and I didn't really quite understand what I was getting myself into when I first started. Shooting a video takes a lot of practice and experience. So some of the things you don't see me doing is flubbing up on lines after lines after lines. So for 50 filming video minutes, I actually cut it down to about 10 minutes of actual YouTube video. So that means I spent about five times more minutes shooting a video than actually showing you the end process. And then the other aspect is just missing things on my outline and having to go back and shoot them. Because sometimes you can't mimic the exact conditions of the video and you just have to look kind of weird. And then the other thing that I really struggle with is 
integrating B-roll and graphics into my videos. In this sense, I really struggle because I see the other professional YouTube channels having crisp and nice graphics and I'm jealous that I'm not able to get there yet. I know it's something that I can practice and get good at. I want the really spiffy graphics and visuals. For me, I just have to understand that it's only a matter of time and experience before I can get better and better at creating visuals. And then lastly, I wanna talk about the things I wanna work on for my YouTube videos. So I wanna optimize my workflow so I can knock down a couple of hours on each video I make. Really, the amount of time it takes for me to make a video is about 10 to 12 hours and maybe even more when it's graphic intensive. I know that as I get more experience, I'll have a whole library of graphic art and templates to use from. So that in and of itself is going to knock down the amount of time I take to make a video. But I also want to optimize my shooting and then optimize my scripting so that I spend less time on each one of those steps. The other thing I want to do is better scripting for my video. I want to optimize it so that my scripts convey exactly what I want to talk about. So I want to have an outline of the steps. So without having to say every single word that I script. Realistically, I'm going to get better by just having more experience with shooting a YouTube video. And I also want to optimize on my filming methods. So just having different locations to shoot from and different lighting conditions ultimately will help me make a better product. This really involves me creating a personalized studio to shoot from and having certain backgrounds and lighting and audio fixed. And I also want to focus on speaking in chunks. So I have less editing cuts to make. So really my short-term goal is to say a phrase in 10 or 15 seconds and go through it without cutting once. And then lastly, I want to focus on just developing my style. So when I first started YouTube, I didn't really have a personalized style that I wanted to convey. I didn't know what color schemes or backgrounds or fonts to use. As I go through making my YouTube videos, I'll slowly develop a style that I like. So eventually I'll get to a point where I have a good branded style. So those are some of the things I learned from starting a YouTube channel. I'll probably make more videos down the line to go into more detail on each one of those topics. But I wanted to give those who are interested in starting their own channel some tips and tricks that I used. I think starting from knowing absolutely nothing to where I am now has been a huge achievement. I certainly hadn't considered how hard the filming process was going to be when I first started. And definitely going through the process, I still have a lot to learn about everything. But I think at a certain deeper level, it's very fun to me to learn something new that I definitely didn't have exposure to before. And so I hope it helps you when you're making your YouTube channel. So leave me a comment down below if you have any suggestions about pain points that you have with your channel or if some of those tips and suggestions have helped you. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends if you found this video to be helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.